I like to look at expunctions as a fresh start, a clean slate. Some of us might have gotten arrested at a young age, having made mistakes, maybe hanging around with the wrong people. Those actions ended up in, in an arrest, and hopefully you got good legal representation and your case was dismissed. And if your case was dismissed, well then you're eligible for an expunction. It's in essence a cleaning of your record from all these agencies from having your fingerprints, mugshots. It's a wiping of that record. Please contact my office. We have the tools to be able to help you. So we were talking about a play or something yeah, like that? Yeah, th there was a... Juan Gabriel had passed away. Mm -hmm. And a producer was doing a, a, a play called Amor Eterno, mm -hmm. where he wanted me to play the... It wasn't Juan Gabriel. It was like Juan Gabriel-like, but in that... I fall in love in that play with a Rocio Durcal-like person. So it never touches like I'm gay or I had to act, you know, feminine or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But uh, um, that's where I met my wife. And my wife was there uh, in the ensemble uh, singing and dancing. And, and then that thing didn't work out because Juan Gabriel's son, you know, had big issues with the royalties and with the rights. And they shut us down, you know, after three months. Mm -hmm. So we did it for three months. And then I met my wife and we were dating and whatnot. And then uh, I said, hey, well, I'm just going to stay here. You know, I was I was happy. And uh, you were alone over there, right? No family or no, anything? No, no family, man. Just by yourself? No, living yo soy bien vago. Yo soy bien vago. Yo, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'll go. I'm, I'm not, yo soy aventado. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I stayed over there, uh, bought a place over there, um, mm -hmm. have a house over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, her family's over there. And so, you know, we go back and forth a lot. So, yeah. so. What's the difference between living over here and living over there, man? Oh, my God, bro. Polar opposites. Polar opposites, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, uh, for example, well, I mean, traffic, there's a bunch of traffic over, over there. there. Have you it, felt it, any earthquakes there? I have. We were there in the big one. Yeah. At her place. Because according and to it was bad. Dude. It, it was, was bad. I mean, we saw buildings that had fallen down and mm -hmm. yeah, Mexico we, City we, we is actually, supposedly on the lake bed or something like parts that. of it is yeah. parts of it is. And but we bought a place that was not in the lake bed because mm -hmm. I don't want to go through that again. Yeah. You know. It's 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 really bad. What it's, about the um, the you know the the economy and stuff like that? Living over there, living over here. What's it's the difference? cheaper to live, bro. You can honestly, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm not hating on Texas. I like Texas too. You know, it gives me a lot of different things. But over there, you walk a lot. Mm -hmm. I can walk. Yeah. And on the corners, there's fruit stands with guys selling fresh mango, fresh melon fresh pineapple mm -hmm. uh, you can eat healthy mm -hmm. in mexico believe it or not there isn't a mcdonald's in the corner there or anything? there is not and <laughs> and so you can eat very healthy and here in the valley it's a challenge man mm -hmm. it's a challenge everywhere you go there is everybody's trying to compete to put more grasa on the food and and it's tough is it's life tough. as fast over there as it is here back? it's way faster in Mexico City? Oh, my God. Yeah, way faster. Yeah. You got to be on your toes, bro. See? Yeah, you got to be on your toes. I, I don't wear... I brought my Rolexes over here to Texas. I don't even wear them. Yeah. Because... Uh, it's dangerous. Yeah, a friend of mine was actually robbed at, at the nicest area in Mexico City, the most expensive in Polanco. Mm -hmm. Got hit over the head with a, with a, uh, with a helmet from a, a motorcycle, motorcycle. Yeah. And they stole his Rolex. And so this is in the nicest area. So I said, you know what? I, I wear warm-ups, uh, tennis shoes, and uh, nothing. Well, there's a lot of kidnappings over there too, man. You well, not worry really, about man. That? Nah. Well, that's what we, I mean, we hear about that yeah, here. That there's I, I mean, kidnappings I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of everything, but, but you got to watch yourself and, you know, and, and choose good areas to live in and, and always always be watching yourself. And, and you it's can't a different be, life. It's you can't be carrying a gun or anything like that over oh, there. Oh, no, right? bro. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. there, the, the, just the bad guys and the cops got guns. Yeah. yeah. How yes, does that sir. feel, man? Uh, I wish it were different. But, mm -hmm. um, but then again, I have people, friends that tell me it would never work, man, because you'd have people here that want a vendetta against somebody else. They bribe somebody to give them a permiso, and then they'd kill them and invent a story. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can't trust your people, Yeah, unfortunately. Well, you've been over there a while already, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get the almost five, six years? Yeah, okay. Well, I, no, it's, no, it's been like more like three and a half. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, three and a half years. Yeah. And you were born here in Edinburgh, right? Of course. I yeah. was born here in Edinburgh. My dad, too. 75 or what? 73. 73? Yes, sir. I'm and the oldest. It's crazy because... 
this guy's got music in his blood, musicianship in his blood, because your mom, yeah, her brother is a, was a singer for Romance, one of my all-time favorite bands back in the early 80s. Dude. Yeah, and I mean, his father, my grandfather, was uh, Los Donenos. Los Donenos at yeah. Donna, yeah. and then uh, your uncle, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy, also Jimmy plays, plays drums. drums. My your, other uncle plays, uh, Gordon Flacco played the, uh, saxophone. the saxophone. My uncle Yael yeah. played the accordion. So yeah, the so, music's in Man, you were born right into it, man. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But you know, it, it, that, that was never the plan. I, was, I didn't plan on being a, mm -hmm. uh, a singer. Yeah. I never wanted that. Well, I, wanted growing to, up, uh, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wait, was I was very studious. This house that we're living, I mean that we're that you're living in right now with your dad and your mom, uh, was this the house where you were when you were born? Were you, they living here already? No, 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 no. We lived in Ed Couch in a very, very small house. Oh, okay. Um, no, I grew up. We grew up. You know. Yeah. Uh, poor. Because your dad, it. my dad was a migrant. Yeah, your dad you know? was playing with other bands as well. Because. Your dad was a music teacher first, right, or something like that. My dad heard. was a music teacher. Yeah. Yeah. In school, was and it in Couch Elsa or where? Uh, was it? no, in Far. In Far. Yeah. But but this room is my room. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's on my parents' property, but it's my room, and yeah. I I kicked him out and moved him to the back. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Built my room here, and this is yeah. This is our little pad, you know. So it's, when you were born, was your dad still teaching music, or what was he doing? Was my dad still teaching music? Uh, in school or was he already I, I don't know because he was playing with uh yeah los casinos los casinos right man. right yeah i've seen albums man, yeah and with at first they, they they didn't let him sing because they said he sounded like a girl mm -hmm. he yeah. has a very high-pitched voice he does yeah 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 totally yeah so growing up in the i guess in 82 mm. 83 you were like 11 years old yeah and your dad was already playing quite a bit no man the, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to go every summer and and go on tour with him. Mm -hmm. And so every time he'd go into the studio, I'd also go. And honestly, I didn't want to be a musician, mm -hmm. but I liked it. I li it was interesting to me. I'm, I'm a student, one of those guys that likes to ask questions and learn everything about everything. And very so, inquisitive. Very inquisitive. Mm -hmm. So they, they'd call me 20 questions back mm -hmm. then, you know. Hey, 20 questions, come over here. Because <laughs> I was always asking, what about this? And what's this for? It was just all information, right, yeah. to, to do stuff. And then I got an academic scholarship to go to St. Mary's. And, from uh, Edinburgh High? From Edinburgh High, right. yeah. Bobcat. Yeah. I graduated with honors. Mm -hmm. So I was, a, I was a nerd. Wow. But um, I went to school and then did the song Contigo. And my dad didn't tell me about it. I remember seeing it. that yeah. the very first time. I think it was on uh, Johnny Canales. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, your dad and, and, introduced. And you. Honestly, they offered me a contract that I couldn't refuse, mm -hmm. and I negotiated it four times, and I kept telling them no, 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 no. And I, I learned then that the most powerful word in show business is no. When mm -hmm. you can have the luxury to say no, you're in a very, you're in a very powerful position mm -hmm. because you're not desperate, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, oh, okay, I guess. Yeah, you know. It's I, like when I, you call them, the ball's in their court. When they call you, the ball's in your court. You know, that's right. And yeah, and they called me. What was your dad it. thinking, or what was he? What was what was he telling you when you? My were... dad didn't want me to be a singer. Okay. Um, he would actually tell them not to look for me, that I was going to finish school because I was going to be a, the first lawyer of the family. When you did that and, show at, at Johnny Canales, yeah. had you already finished college? Oh no, I never finished. Oh, you didn't. No, finish. I, I lacked eighteen hours to finish college. Oh man. So and you never went. I, I never went back, okay. and he he was mad about it. But yeah. 
he didn't want me to do it, but you know, when I, when I got there, I didn't only negotiate my contract, I negotiated his contract. And he was with Capital EMI too. Yeah, I told Manolo, you know, once we had, we had negotiated mine at $60,000 per album, they were paying my dad 15. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Manolo, I like the, the money, I like everything, the offer, but my dad's making 15 and he's a legend. And it's a slap in the face if I come home with a $60,000 contract. Can you bump him up to 30? And he said, sure. And I Fácil. said, great. So I, I called and my dad's like, ¿Qué dijo? I'm like, I just <laughs> negotiated your contract and got you, you know, 100% more of, uh, than what they were giving you before. And he's like, oh, more oh, beer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. That was that. Well, you know what? Your dad did deserve that, man, because absolutely, your dad's a pioneer in the music industry, bro. I mean, yes. I was talking with Raulito Navaira and he had wrote, ya no me pones atención. And he says, man, I, I, you know, I heard Roberto sing that song, you know, yeah. and he wasn't able to record it. So, you know, Emilio told him, I'll do it. I'll do it, carnal, you know. Yeah. But those guys in San Antonio looked up to Roberto, man. Of course. I mean, and yeah, we were, grew up. We grew up. Inspired. We grew up in the industry, man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was friends with a lot of people and mm -hmm. in the industry, and I, I knew them. I, I, I was... I was I grew up watching Joe Lopez and Jimmy Gonzalez and Mas and you know I was on the circuit just as a fan you know yeah. Roberto Pulido's son just going and checking it out you mm -hmm. know so when she did the Contigo song which was like on a compilation album right it wasn't even a regular no, CD it was Branding right. Irons or something like that that's the only song to hit yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, so once you did that then the record labels came up and they started I had two labels looking for me and I got them in a, in was a bidding, it Sony and Capital yeah and I got them in a bidding war <laughs> that's yeah. the way to do <laughs> yeah, it man yeah so <laughs> I like to look at expunctions as a fresh start a clean slate some of us might have gotten arrested at a young age having made mistakes maybe hanging around with the wrong people those actions ended up in, in an arrest and hopefully you got good legal representation and your case was dismissed and if your case was dismissed well then you're eligible for an expunction and it's in essence a cleaning of your record from all these agencies from having your fingerprints mug shots it's a wiping of that record please contact my office we have the tools to be able to help you